Hi, and welcome to DDR series on India's HSTDV hypersonic program. In the earlier videos, we've seen exactly what happened during DRDO's first successful scramjet engine test with the HSTDV, and then how the scramjet engine in the HSTDV works, as well as the aerodynamic aspects of the scramjet engine itself. If you've not watched them, go watch them first. Links in the description below. Also, you can now support our efforts by joining the DDR community right here on YouTube. That would go a long way in helping us bring you more content on indigenous development in aerospace and defense in India. Right, we've seen how the scramjet engine in the HSTV works. But to build an actual missile, you need to make these missiles out of materials that can withstand the intense aerodynamic and thermal loads that can occur at speeds greater than Mach 5. As with any flying hypersonic vehicle, it needs to be extremely light, extremely strong, and being hypersonic needs to tackle extreme heat, all while being cheap enough to let you build missiles in the hundreds without breaking the bank. You might ask, ballistic missile re-entry vehicles have been used for decades, and they reach very high Mach numbers and survive perfectly okay on re-entry. What did they use? And why not use the same materials for scramjets as well as boost glide vehicles? Re-entry vehicles use ablative materials generally that sacrifice themselves by absorbing the heat energy, keeping the inner system cool. At lower temperature, the material turns into char, which the aerodynamic forces on the re-entry vehicle remove from the surface. Re-entry vehicles need thermal protection only for a few seconds, unlike cruise missiles which have to tolerate extreme temperatures for nearly 10 minutes or more, with very high heat over very small areas. High temperature oxidation and erosion due to aerodynamic forces and very high temperature gradients is the issue here. Generally, re-entry vehicles or RVs have blunt edges to reduce heat generation and use carbon phenolic materials over an aluminium frame as ablative thermal protection systems. Hypersonic vehicles fly lower in the atmosphere and therefore need sharp leading edges in the nose, wings and tails to cater to aerodynamic demands to fly faster than Mark V. Heat flux is inversely proportional to the square root of the radius. Sharper the leading edge, smaller the radius. For hypersonic speeds, the heat flux is extremely high, leading to temperatures nearing 2000 degrees centigrade. How to tackle such high temperatures? Refractory ceramic compounds such as borides, carbides and nitrides of transition elements such as hafnium, zirconium, tantalum and titanium have some of the highest known melting points. Apart from high melting points, they have high electrical and thermal conductivity, high hardness and good chemical inertness and oxidation resistance, especially transition metal diborides. The earliest research on ultra-high temperature ceramics can be traced back to the 1950s in the United States on hafnium diborate and zirconium diborate, HFB2 and ZRB2, to be used as nuclear reactor materials because of their excellent high temperature corrosion resistance. In 2000, as part of the slender hypervelocity aerodynamic research probes SHARP program, a joint NASA Sandia National Labs and US Air Force program, four Ultra-high temperature ceramic streaks were attached to a US Air Force Mark 12A re-entry vehicle deployed from a Minuteman 3 launch vehicle. The Mark 12A re-entry vehicle was a ballistic sphere cone RV with a carbon-carbon nose tip and a carbon phenolic heat shield. The modified Mark 12A RV nose cap replaced with HFB2 silicon carbide UHTC insert with a small sharp nose radius. They attached HFBR2 streaks to another Mark 12A re-entry vehicle to assess its performance at hypersonic velocities. The results obtained demonstrated their high temperature capability as the first signs of ablation were recorded at 2815 degrees centigrade. To tackle the heating problem in high-speed vehicles, materials were developed as part of the North American X-15 National Aerospace Plane Program NASP, HyperX, Falcon, High Shot, High Fly and High Cost programs. Using materials such as Incarel, Titanium Zirconium Molybdenum TZM Metal Matrix Composite, Titanium Carbide and Zirconium Carbide in the Molybdenum Matrix, and other such materials. Compared to borides, carbide based UHTCs such as Hafnium Carbide have similar coefficient of thermal expansion but higher electrical resistivity and slightly lower mechanical properties. However, carbide based UHTCs are easier to oxidize at lower temperatures limiting their applications to some extent. Compared to carbides and borides, the mechanical properties of nitride-based UHTCs are even lower. High temperature ablators such as carbon-carbon 
or carbon silicon carbide ceramic matrix composites cncs require high energies to break down and offer high temperature protection this is the reason for their use in nose caps wing and tail leading edges in high speed vehicles like the rlv tv and hstdv in the hstdv hot structures such as the nose cap are made of carbon carbon composite the thermal protection system is made of carbon silicon carbide over an aluminum or titanium frame we've mentioned in an earlier video that the combustor and struts are made of c263 nickel alloy these will be replaced by carbon carbon silicon carbide composites in the future in a scramjet engine temperature increases first by air compression by the ramp intake then in the combustor burning fuel pushes temperatures up to 300 kelvin fuel injection struts combustor walls face intense heat necessitating use of special materials that can withstand such very high temperatures in the hstdv c263 as well as others like c276 and ra333 are heavy materials and not really feasible for long duration operations materials such as carbon and silicon carbide composites while able to tolerate high temperatures have poor surface finish required for combustor use zircon carbide zrcb2 based ceramic composites have shown great promise in this area exhibiting low porosity moderate density high hardness good oxidation resistance high hot strength and good thermal shock resistance formation of a thin layer of zircon oxide with very high hardness prevents further oxidation and erosion this means the zirconium composite is seemingly better candidate than silicon carbide or carbon composites for sharp edge features of hypersonic vehicles we've seen in an earlier video how fuel cooled injection struts are being used to tackle intense heating around these struts there is ongoing research in the us and china on using transpiration cooling on leading edges to further lower heat flux we we'll look at fuel for scramjet engines in the next video As for the struts, we do know that silicon carbide bed struts have been manufactured for a scramjet combustor, as well as a silicon carbide composite double wall scramjet combustor has also been made. We'll know the results of all these development programs in due course, as in when they are released for public consumption, perhaps after successful flight soon. At this point, it's important to know just what composites are. We're all familiar with reinforced cement concrete, also known as RCC. Concrete has excellent compressive strength but very poor tensile strength. Steel reinforcements help provide this tensile strength to concrete, which is how it is used for construction worldwide as RCC. Similarly, while ultra high temperature composites, the borides and carbides and nitrides we saw earlier, are attractive since they have very high temperature capability and high thermal conductivity, they have poor oxidation resistance and low fracture toughness. This necessitates using fiber reinforcement. When force is applied, on these ultra high temperature composites the load is transferred from the matrix to the fibers due to the weak bond among fiber layers composites reinforced with 2d fiber preform generally show low interlaminar shear strength this can be improved by adding vertical fibers or using 3d fiber preforms in addition an intact interface with suitable thickness is also required for excellent mechanical properties thermal properties such as thermal expansion coefficient thermal diffusivity conductivity and specific heat are critical to USTCs and are significantly affected by phase content and microstructure of these composites fibers used for reinforcement are designed to overcome the brittleness and poor thermal shock resistance of monolithic USTCs however these fibers must also be able to withstand extremely high temperature and harsh environments in which the USTCs are used so the type of fiber reinforcement used will influence the mechanical properties significantly and also affect fabrication due to the relatively low cost and better ultra high temperature properties carbon fibers were the most commonly used reinforcements nowadays silicon carbide fibers are used widely to reinforce bulk uhtcs developing uhtc fibers with excellent thermal and oxidation stability therefore becomes critical for further improving the properties of uhtcs in india Developing and manufacturing silicon carbide fibers is still a work in progress. It is another closely guarded technology that India strives to indigenize. Continuous fiber reinforcements with different weaving modes are developed for high performance UHTCs. 3D preforms mainly containing needle, woven or braided fiber preforms exhibit better mechanical properties. These are used widely today. 
Even though the composites are reinforced with continuous fibers, the interbundle and interlaminar matrix also show brittle behavior at micron scale. A lot of research has been done to introduce one dimensional nanostructures such as carbon nanotubes, boron nitride nanotubes, and silicon carbide nanowires into the matrix to develop reinforced composites. The vast difference in coefficient of thermal expansion between fibers and ceramic matrix induces residual stresses and cracks in the composite after fabrication. This necessitates an intermediate interface between the fiber and the bulk ceramic to ensure such a thing doesn't happen. Generally, the interface on fibers is deposited by chemical vapor infiltration before introducing the ceramic matrix. A weak interface is necessary to toughen the composite by crack deflection Interface debonding and fiber pullout when load is applied on the composite. Pyrolytic carbon with layered structure and pyrolytic carbon silicon carbide are the most widely used interfaces. Recently, boron nitride silicon carbide multilayer interface has also been developed to improve oxidation resistance of composites by forming a borosilicate glass which can seal cracks and prevent inward diffusion of oxygen in an oxidized environment. To further improve the oxidation resistance of the boron nitride interface, NASA developed a modified boron nitride with silicon and fabricated silicon doped boron nitride interface. Researchers then preferred to fabricate multi layer interfaces to improve the properties of composites by using pyrocarbon, pyrocarbon silicon carbide, and carbon fiber silicon boron carbon nitride composites. Under a clean, dry atmosphere, silicon carbide based Ceramic matrix composites present excellent oxidation resistance, which is attributed to the formation of a protective silica layer. However, under the presence of steam, a common combustion reaction product, especially while burning hydrocarbons or corrosive species like deposition of sea mass, accelerated the degradation of the otherwise protective silica layer, compromising the integrity of the ceramic matrix composite. The oxidation and ablation resistance of UHTCs not only depends on the composition of the matrix but also on the microstructure of the formed oxide layer. A dense oxide layer with limited oxygen diffusion rate is necessary to maintain an effective protection. Therefore, additives into the UHTC matrix to modify oxide layers have been investigated. After much research, silicon carbide was found to be the most used second phase to improve oxidation and ablative resistance. This forms a glassy silicon dioxide layer during oxidation and ablation. However, evaporation of silicon dioxide at ablation temperatures greater than 2200 degrees centigrade results in failure of the oxide layer. In recent years, rare earth oxides and titanium carbide have been introduced into the matrix to stabilize the ablation oxides and increase the melting point of silica further. In addition, silicon boron carbon nitrate based composites have also been utilized. Generally, Hafnium-based UHTCs present better ablation resistance than zirconium-based composites as HFO2 has a higher melting point than ZRO2 and HFP2 shows better anti-ablation properties than hafnium carbide as oxidation products are adherent to the composites. Therefore, parts using basic components like reinforced carbon carbon in applications like RLV-3D nose cap and HSTD weaving in tail leading edges are further protected with a coating of a UHTC such as zirconium carbide or silicon carbide. The American X43A, which hit a top speed of Mach 10 for example, had its leading edges with a three-layer structure followed by a chemical vapor deposited layer of silicon carbide over which a thin chemical vapor deposit layer of hafnium carbide was applied. For UHTC protective coatings, Chemical compatibility with the substrate is essential. Thermophysical compatibility, which mainly relates to a good match of thermal expansion coefficient, is also needed. It also needs low oxygen permeability to prevent inward division of oxidation and a low volatility to prevent excess ablation in high pressure velocity gas streams. Integration of multiple components could thus mitigate the limits of each component and hence multi-phase UHTC coatings have been proposed. Strong interfacial addition with the substrate and good resistance to cracks caused by coating substrate coefficient of thermal expansion mismatch are two general requirements for such coating designs. Despite all this, UHTCs are still prone to cracking and debonding when subject to thermal cycling. To address this problem, 
researchers have resorted to now using nanostructures like nanowires and nanotubes. Specifically, diboride components such as hafnium diboride and zirconium diboride possess extremely high melting points nearly 3200 centigrade and have extremely good oxidation resistance at temperatures up to 2000 degrees centigrade. Hence, they are classified as ultra high temperature ceramic composites. Therefore, these are identified as excellent candidates for nose caps, sharp leading edges, veins, and similar objects for use in high velocity flights. Also, the existence of zirconium carbide and silicon carbide in carbon fiber reinforced ceramic composites significantly improves oxidation resistance because of the generation of in situ molten binary oxides in oxidative environments. This seals, cracks, and pores and protects the internal matrix and reinforcement fibers. Silicon carbide and molybdenum silicide improve oxidation resistance of UHTC coatings by forming silica rich scales. The silica rich scales show high fluidities and thus self sealing behavior, which reduces oxidation defects, making them ideal barriers for oxygen diffusion. The addition of rare earth compounds can react with the transition metal oxide and promote the formation of rare earth transition metal oxides such as lanterum zirconate to stabilize their tetragonal phases, contributing to improvement of ablation performance. They can also lead to formation of dense oxide protective layers over the structures. There is tremendous research ongoing at places like Indian Institute of Science in India on finding out the best materials for our hypersonic programs. Let's wait and watch in the future tests as to what we've developed.